As we have discovered, the CPU is the brain of the computer. It performs all the major calculations, and without a processor a computer is essentially useless. We have also discovered that the CPU is a complicated component based around millions of internal transistors. CPUs have developed greatly over the years and have been available in many different shapes and sizes. Most commonly, a CPU will resemble a chip, although some can resemble a card. There are a number of different CPU manufacturers, but in the UK PC market has been mainly dominated by AMD and Intel. Here we have two examples of CPUs and a brief description of each. A CPU can be identified by a make and a model number. Often some references to its processing speed will also be made. From these descriptions we can find important information such as speed, model and manufacturer. In our first example we find that this CPU is manufactured by AMD. The model number is FX8350 with a clock speed of 4 GHz or 4000 million cycles per second. In the second example the CPU is manufactured by Intel. The model number is I54670K and its clock speed is 3.4 GHz. There is even more information about the CPU that can be taken from these examples. However, at this stage, it is enough to know that the make, model and speed are used to categorise the CPU. We should be aware that these two CPU manufacturers use different architecture. Therefore, if you're fitting an AMD CPU, you should use an AMD motherboard. Or if you're fitting an Intel CPU, you should use an Intel motherboard. Notice here the two CPU sockets from each of the boards. They are not physically interchangeable. The transistors within the CPU performs millions or billions of calculations per second. Such activity causes vast amounts of heat to be generated. This heat can destroy the CPU and needs to be dispersed. The most popular way of cooling a CPU in the early days of processors was a piece of aluminium or copper metal that was clipped to the CPU. This heat sink consisted of thinned surfaces so cool air could stream between them, thus cooling down the heat sink. Some manufacturers glued the heat sink onto the CPU to ensure a good contact, like this one shown here manufactured by Cyrex. As CPU speeds increased so did the heat from them and larger heat sinks were produced. Then came the generation of heat sink and fans. The one shown here was fitted to the very much older 486-586 processor. Ultimately, the more modern day heatsink and fan was developed. To increase the contact with the top of the CPU, a special compound is used, sometimes called silicon compound and more commonly known as thermal grease. This is applied to the top of the CPU. A small beaded line is drawn and is normally all that is needed. Once the heat sink and fan is sat on the compound, it will spread over the top of the CPU. You should take care not to cause any spillage over the CPU, as this can cause problems. Some heat sinks and fan manufacturers apply the compound to the bottom of the heat sink, then cover this with some protection. The protector is removed before the heat sink is placed on top of the CPU. An alternative to this is liquid metal that claims to melt at very low temperatures that can cause a much better heat transfer of heat to the heat sink. It comes in a pad form and is applied to the top of the CPU. The heat sink is usually made from copper or aluminium that sits on top of the CPU to draw the heat. The heat sink itself contains no moving parts and does not require power. It is known as passive cooling solution. The fan sits on top of the heat sink to blow the heat away. As a fan contains moving parts and requires power, it is known as an active cooling solution. Normally there will be some type of locking system to hold the heat sink into position. Heat sink and fans vary in price and size. However, the faster the CPU, the more cooling is needed. The question that sometimes arises is, does the fan draw air in or pushes it out to dissipate the heat? This depends on the design of the heatsink and fan. These two heatsinks shown here work on similar principles, 
They both sit on the CPU and the heat is drawn up through copper links into the main body, and only made from aluminium. The heat is then drawn from the heat sink by a fan in an upward direction, so sucking out the heated air. The centre heat sink and fan shown here works in the opposite direction and the fan draws the air downwards and the heated air is expelled through the aluminium heat sink. If in doubt on the suitability of the heat sink and fan, then consult the CPU manufacturer. When buying a CPU, look out for the term OEM and retail box. Retail box CPUs often come with the heatsink and fan included, saving the hassle of choosing a separate cooling system.